Now, um, these cards store 96 characters, but this is only the beginning. See, there are many innovations on the way, and we'll be able to store more and more in smaller and smaller units. You'll see, Pietro, it won't be long before you do all your work on your own computer at home. All the information you need will be in your little machine, and you won't even need to go to the library anymore. <laughs> now, uh, my assistants will show you how the punch cards work. Uh, Maria! Coming! Yeah, yeah. Right, Lena, come with me. Well, then, uh, could you congratulate Elisa? If my sister wants it, what can I do? <laughs> You're happy to be used by Michaela. Hey, he's not using me. I'm using him. Sure. Yeah, you'll see. Well, you left, Lena. You don't know anything about us anymore. You mean I can only have an opinion if I live in Naples? Naples? Florence? <laughs> Lena, you're not doing anything anywhere. What does that mean? Well, those are the facts. I know my facts, Leela, not you. All right, all right, don't get angry. You know, I always want what's best for you. Well, you've left. But you know who's back in Naples? Nino Saratori. Lino? Yeah, he has a professorship at the university. He married someone related to half of the banker di Napoli. And they have a one-year-old child. Are you planning to see him? No, but if I do, I'll tell him Gennaro's not his. And you continued talking, almost in fragments. I told you how much I liked Pietro. He should have listened. You told me Stefano had ruined himself. Yeah, the carabinieri found stolen goods in the back of his shop. What? Yeah, I'm giving him money now. You know, I'm earning 450,000 lira a month. You know, I could give money to everyone. My whole family. And now they've all forgiven me. My mother and my father. <laughs> but you already found your job boring. You wanted faster machines. What a terrible thing a dissatisfied mind is, Leno. You remember how I defaced that photograph of me in the wedding dress in the shop in Piazza de Masseri? <laughs> yeah, well, I want to continue along that path. One day, I'll reduce myself to diagrams. I'll become a perforated tape, and you won't find me anymore. Lila. And you told me to go and see Alfonso Coracci, who was still working in the shop in the Piazza de Masseri, and whom I had neglected. Yeah. He's always talking about the value of friendship. I didn't tell you I'd already been to see him when you were still at the sausage factory, and, as always, we had only talked about you. Lena! I'm so happy to see you! <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're even more handsome than I remembered, Alfonso. Yeah. And I hear you're marrying Marisa Saratore. The family must be happy. And you? I was fine the way I was. Well, you can't expect Marisa to be a fiancé for life. Well, she went to Michele. She set him against me. Are you saying you're marrying Marisa because Michaela Solara told you to? I don't want to upset Michele. He put me in here. He trusted my abilities. And... I'm fond of him. You're mad. You don't understand what Michele is really like. And you can't understand what I feel for him. Didn't Leela say anything to you? She told me Marisa was pregnant. Life is a very ugly business, Lena. Marisa will be a good wife and a good mother. I don't care about her. Leela didn't tell you. <laughs> She's an extraordinary woman. She guessed, of course, and then I told her. But she didn't even tell her best friend, and that means she hasn't told anyone, even when things were so hard for her. She'll never betray anyone, that girl. I'm not following. Of course. You're my friend too, and I should have told you. Lenu, I don't like girls. I'm queer. You never suspected? I noticed then how he had found a way to resemble you, Leela. And the person I love, really love, is Michele Solara. Back in the car, towards Florence, I thought about how much I'd lost by leaving Naples. I'd left thinking I was destined for new things. But it was you, Leela, who seemed more modern, more active. I had wanted to become something, but without real passion, without a determined objective. I'd only wanted to become something because I was afraid of lagging behind you. 
Now I felt I needed to become something for myself alone, free of you. I went to see Adele as soon as we got back. I didn't know my book had been published in Germany. Oh yes, in Spain and France as well. Well, shouldn't I be doing something? There's no need, just be satisfied. But Adele, shouldn't I be promoting it abroad, going to conferences? Not really, Lena. Unfortunately, the book didn't sell anywhere. I was discontented. My children exhausted me. I quarrelled with my husband. He started spending more and more time in the library. He said nothing about his work at the university. And since I was out of public life, I only read in the newspapers about the fascists who were killing with impunity and about the police who had a broad mandate to shoot anyone.